ബിസ്മില്ലാഹിറബിലാമീൻ Respected and beloved listeners, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has granted us the opportunity to witness and experience yet another day of this Mubarak month of the Qur'an. And in keeping with this celebrated description of this blessed month, We continue our journey towards gaining a better understanding of the glorious and noble Quran. It is here my respected and beloved listeners that we begin our segment with the 18th juz. This juz comprises of 3 surahs, the first surah being Al-Mu'minun, the believers, a name that aptly summarizes the theme of this chapter. The surah begins where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the qualities of the believers who are blessed and have attained victory. The first quality is what? Al-lazina hum fi salatihim khashi'oon Those who have adopted khushu' in their salah. Those who stand in front of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with khushu' Go and open the tafsir of Imam Ibn Kathir rahmahullah, the giant commentator of the glorious and the noble Qur'an. There in volume 6, page 414, he brings the definition and the explanation of khushu'. He says that it means what? Calmness, serenity, tranquility, dignity, and humility. These are the qualities that the true believer stands with in front of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go and open the tafsir of Imam At-Tabari rahmahullah ta'ala in volume 19, page 9. There he brings the definition from Abdullah bin Abbas radiyallahu an who explained that the meaning of khushu' is to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with fear and tranquility. So now the question is posed, the respected and beloved listeners, why is khushu' then mentioned first as an attribute to salah? This is because of how difficult it is to maintain khushu is very easily lost and this was explained by the nabi of allah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam who stated the first thing to be taken away from this ummah will be the quality of khushu until you will see no one who has khushu this was recorded in sahih at-targhib hadith number 543 Khushu is gained by the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sense that he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching us this is how the believer adopts khushu this is how the believer gains khushu by understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching us this was recorded by Imam Ibn Kathir rahmallahu ta'ala in his tafsir in volume 6 page 414 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then further states walladhina hum 'anil laghwi mu'ridud and those who turn away from al-laghw al-laghw refers to falsehood which includes shirk and any words or deeds that are of no benefit the nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam what did he say Go and open the Sahih of Imam Bukhari rahmallahu ta'ala. There the Nabi of Allah, what did he state? Let he who truly believes in Allah and the last day speak only good or be silent. Imam At-Tirmidhi rahmallahu ta'ala also states, the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? Out of a person being a good Muslim is that he leaves alone that which does not benefit him. So this is the description of the believer who turns away from al-laghw. 
Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala then continues walladhina hum lizakati fa'ilun and those who pay their zakah why is this important Imam At-Tabarani rahimahullah ta'ala he narrates that the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam what did he say walam yamna'u zakata amwalihim illa muni'u al-qatr min as-sama walawla al-baha'im lam yumtaru O oh my Sahaba, the time will come when no one will pay their zakah. And when this happens, let them know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep away the rain from them. It will stop raining. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not bless us with rain when we stop paying our zakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on further. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And those who guard their chastity. إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَنَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Except from their wives or that their right hand possess. For them, they are free from blame. But whoever seeks beyond that, then those are the transgressors. What does this mean? It means that those who protect their private parts from unlawful actions, fornication and homosexuality, they also do not approach anyone except their wives whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made permissible for them or what their right hand possesses. This refers to the female slaves which Allah has made permissible for the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they are free from blame. But whoever seeks beyond that, then those are the transgressors. Allah further describes the believers as what? وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَعَهْدِهِمْ رَعُودٌ Those who are faithfully true to their amana and to their covenants. What does that mean? It means when they, the believers, when they are entrusted with something, they do not betray that trust, but they fulfill it. And when they make a promise or when they make a pledge, they are true to their word. Allah then further describes the believers, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ And those who strictly guard their five compulsory salahs, Salah again, here is being mentioned. Why? Because of the importance and virtue of Salah. The Nabi of Allah, what did he say? Go and open the narration of Imam Tabarani, ta'ala, as was authenticated in Sahih al-Jami, in volume 1, page 503. There the Nabi of Allah, what did he say? He stated that the first matter that the slave will be brought to account for on the day of Qiyamah will be his Salah. If his salah is sound, then the rest of his deeds will be sound. And if it is bad, then the rest of his deeds will be bad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from neglecting our salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then concludes his description of the believers in this segment of the Jews by stating, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ these are indeed the true heirs and inheritors who shall inherit the firdaus. الَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They will inherit the firdaus. They shall dwell therein forever. After mentioning these characteristics of the successful believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the believers the good news of firdaus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger said, If you ask Allah for Jannah, then ask Him for Firdaus. For it is the highest part of paradise, in the middle of paradise, and from it spring the rivers of paradise. And above it is the mighty throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was recorded by Imam ibn Hajar ta'ala in his monumental works, Fathul Bari, in volume 13, page 415. So this concludes the descriptions given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the true believers, those who have true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are the true heirs of Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all Jannatul Firdaus. 
The rest of the Jews then, uh, respected and beloved listeners, describes incidents from the lives of various prophets as well as rejecting the disbelievers and defending the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his message. In closing, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala returns to describing further qualities of the believers with a description of the last day and a supplication for mercy and forgiveness. It is then followed by the chapter or the surah An-Nur, the crowning verse of which is the verse of light, verse 35. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states, Allahu Nuru Samawati Wal Ar. This is the crowning verse, verse 35 of Surah Nur, a parable described by Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu an as the parable of his light in the heart of a believer. We then move to the final chapter in this juz, which is Surah Al-Furqan, the criterion which develops on the contrast of light and darkness. This surah, respected and beloved listeners, comforts the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, reassuring him and supporting him at a time when he faced obstinate rejection, hostility and maltreatment from those he was calling to. So this in a nutshell summarizes the 18th Jews, respected and beloved listeners. We now continue to find out what are the lessons that we learned from this Jews. First and foremost, the qualities of the believers are recounted in the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun. Now we need to ask ourselves, how many of these qualities do we possess? We also learn regarding the scene of death and how it is depicted from the blowing of the trumpet until the end of those who disbelieve. Surah Al-Mu'minun begins by stating that the believers will be successful and it ends by stating that the disbelievers will not be successful. We also learn from Surah Nur the prescribed punishment for fornication, making false accusations and the ruling of Li'an which is to invoke the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The chapter divinely confirms the virtue of Aisha radiallahu anha from the false rumors spread about her. We also learn that one must ask for permission before entering a house. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that He will establish on earth those who believe, but this has conditions and they are listed in this juz. Surah Al-Furqan begins by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the one who revealed the criterion. It also discusses the accusations made against the Quran and the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this concludes our segment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us all the understanding of the 18th Jews and all the other ajza of the Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the ability to put into practice what has been mentioned. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the ability to understand what has been mentioned. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.